morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Bible Time Travels. We've got a new quarter starting today. It's June. We're down to our last three months of this um, year for this class. So we're going to get on with our lesson now, and we're, today we're going to visit Paul's epistles. So let's find our planet that we're going to visit. Here we are, Paul's epistles. Do you, anybody know which planet we're ready for? We're ready for Paul's epistle to the Galatians. Now, who knows what timeline event we've been in now for several lessons. Let's go up to our timeline, and we find that we're still in epistles. Who remembers what the word epistles means? Audrey? Right, it means letters. These are letters that were written. Okay, now let's look at our screen. And who can tell me what the word liberty means? Does anybody know what that means? Riley. Correct. It means to be free or to have independence. Most of you are familiar with the Statue of Liberty, and you know that we have one of those in our souvenir shop. So let's just look at Lady Liberty for a minute. Did you know it was given to America by the people of France in 1886? And it's the statue of a woman representing a Roman goddess. This goddess was the goddess of liberty, and her name was Libertus. There's a broken chain that you probably can't see at her feet, but it's, it signifies our country's liberty from British rule. You see in her right hand, she holds a torch, and in her left hand, she carries a tablet inscribed in Roman numerals with July the 4th, 1776. That was the day of the U.S. Declaration of Independence. Now, what is the Declaration of Independence? Does anybody know? Bentley, I thought you would know that. It was a statement adopted by the Continental Congress on July 4, 1776. It announced that the 13 American colonies would now become 13 independent states, no longer under the British Empire. And these states would be called the United States of America. The Declaration of Independence was the beginning of our free and liberated country. Well, let's come back up here to the screen now. And we see that the book of Galatians, the theme is Christian liberty. This book has been called the Christian's Declaration of Independence. And on our trip today, we're going to discover why that is. But for right now, let's go back to Bible times. And we're going to go way back to the book of Exodus. When we get to the book of Exodus, which we've already visited there this year, we found that God's people, the Israelites, were in bondage. And where were they in bondage? Gabriel, do you know? Right, Egypt. They were in Egyptian bondage. They cried out to God for liberty, and who did God send to deliver them from bondage? Riley, do you know? Yes, Moses, correct. God led them through the wilderness and back to the promised land of Canaan. And this gave them liberty from Egyptian bondage. So they had liberty there from Egyptian bondage. Hundreds of years later, the Israelites, who have now become known as the Jews, were taken exile and into captivity by two different countries. You remember the northern kingdom got captured by one country and later the southern kingdom of Judah got um, taken captive by another country. What were those two countries? Audrey? Yes, Assyria, the northern kingdom got taken by Assyria and the southern kingdom by Babylon. Well, after about 70 years in Babylonian captivity, God worked through the Persian king Cyrus to liberate the Jews. They were allowed to return to Jerusalem, which was their homeland and the promised land. And you'll remember that they got to rebuild the wall of the city and they got to rebuild the temple. So we see that God's people were liberated from Egyptian bondage and later they were liberated from captivity in Babylon. Well, now we see that Paul writes a letter with the theme indicating that these New Testament Christians have been given liberty from something. I want you to pay special attention as we travel today 
to see if you can figure out why Christians in Paul's day needed liberty. What did they need liberty from? And remember, we want to find out why this letter to the Galatians is sometimes called the Christian's Declaration of Independence. So let's get ready to travel. I'm going to leave the light on this time and hope that that will still be visible. Let's look at our window as we begin to travel. Everybody ready? Try not to get distracted. See where we're going to land today. Welcome to Galatia in Asia Minor. Galatians is another epistle, and who was it written by, Bentley? Correct, Paul. And what did we say an epistle is, Gabriel? Yes, it's a letter. And the theme of Paul's letter is what, Audrey? Christian liberty. And what did we say that liberty means, Riley? Correct, freedom. Our GPS coordinates show us that Asia Minor is a peninsula in Western Asia between the Black and Mediterranean Seas. You see the Black Sea up there above it, and the Mediterranean Sea is the gray area below it. You, you can see the label down there. Galatia is circled in red, and it's a province in Asia Minor. You can see its relationship to Jerusalem, which is circled in green at the lower right corner of the map. Paul's epistles we've visited so far were written to individual congregations of the Lord's Church, but the letter to Galatians is written to multiple congregations here in the province of Galatia. Paul was likely in the city of Ephesus on his third journey when he wrote this letter to the Christians in Galatia. And you can see Ephesus there by the yellow star. If you remember when we visited Paul's missionary journeys in the book of Acts, it was on the first journey that Paul founded the Lord's Church in the cities of Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. All of these are in Galatia. Paul's work in Galatia was very successful. Great multitudes, mostly Gentiles. And who remembers what a Gentile is? Bentley? Yes, anyone that's not a Jew is a Gentile. So great multitudes, mostly Gentiles, were, they were so enthusiastic as they accepted Christ and were baptized into the church. But soon after Paul left Galatia, certain Jewish teachers have now come along insisting that the Gentiles cannot be Christians without keeping the law of Moses. These Gentile Christians believe and accept the Jewish teachings just as excitedly as they had first received Paul's message of the gospel of Christ. Well, when Paul gets the news that this is going on, he writes this letter to the Galatian Christians to help them understand better what the law of Christ is all about. Do you remember on one of our very first trips, we talked about how God has a divine design for his creation and for our salvation? Well, an important part of that design or plan was the two laws that he would give to his people. When we visited the book of Exodus, we saw Moses go up on Mount Sinai and receive the first written law given to mankind. And it was known as the, what was it known as, Riley? The law of Moses, yes. It's a law of some 613 commandments, including what we know as the Ten Commandments. Well, God gave this law to the Israelites, who later became the Jewish nation. But the other law God had planned from the beginning would be given to his son, Jesus. He would send Christ the word to earth as a human son of God. This law would be for the church that Jesus would establish on earth and his followers would be called Christians. Now remember this, this is a very important statement. When Jesus died on the cross, the law of Moses was done away with and the law of Christ came into effect. Remember that, when Jesus died on the cross, the old law was no longer in effect but the law of Christ is what we are to follow. The law of Moses is often referred to as the Old Covenant and the law of Christ as the New Covenant. The Galatian Christians have listened to false teachers who have convinced them that Christians have to live under the law of Moses as well as the law of Christ. That's not God's plan at all, so Paul needs to help straighten out the wrongs that they've been taught by these false teachers 
He doesn't want to feel like they're bound to all those laws and commands of the law of Moses. Instead, he wants them to realize that the law of Christ sets us free from the bondage of the old covenant. The law of Christ is a law of liberty. Paul writes, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. And accursed means sentenced to punishment or destruction. The true purpose of the law of Moses was to point to or to lead up to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. It was given to one nation of people, the Jews. The law of Christ includes all generations. It doesn't make any difference whether we're Jew or Greek or free or slave or male or female. Remember, the law of Moses ended when Jesus died on the cross. Paul explains to the Galatian Christians that salvation doesn't come from keeping the 600 plus rules of the law of Moses. Salvation comes by grace. It's a gift of God. Grace is getting what you do not deserve and not one of us deserves salvation. None of us can do enough good works to, enter he to earn heaven. We must have a faith-filled heart that seeks to obey the commands of Christ. That's how we'll be saved. When we're baptized into Christ, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that just means that we get, that the Spirit of God comes into our hearts to live. Our heart is the Holy Spirit's home. We must be, um, we must allow the Spirit to lead and direct our lives as we study very carefully the Word of God and talk to Him continuously in prayer. Then we'll be like a plant that produces fruit. We'll produce fruit of the Spirit. Paul lists this fruit in chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. As the fruit appears on the tree, say the word that appears beside it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. I know that y'all know the little song, that you sing with this. I have never learned that song, but I know you have sung it for me before. And I think you know what these words mean, but I might just mention that long suffering means to have patience. Faithfulness is being true to God and gentleness is kindness. I think you know what all the other words mean. When we live for God, this fruit will become a part of our personality, a part of what we are and who we are and the way that we'll serve others. There's a song that I'm going to try to sing for you that I know you would love to sing if you were in the class. So I hope you'll sing along because even if you don't know it, it's easy to get the tune. And so let's sing this together. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. And it flows like a river and it flows like a river. It flows like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. And it flows like a fountain. And it flows like a fountain. It flows like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. And it flows like an ocean, and it flows like an ocean. It flows like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got joy like a fountain. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got joy like a fountain. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. Okay, let's see what's next. Uh-oh, compass point alerts. For anyone that's watching this that isn't familiar with our curriculum, uh, you'll see in front of our screen, which is actually the window of our cockpit as we travel back in time, there's a big Bible on top of a box and it's called compass points. The compass on that box is every book of the Bible and you'll see all four directions it points to Jesus. Our compass point, the Bible, always points to Jesus in every book. So when we see this compass point alert, this is to um, give us a clue 
that the next three slides may have a hint as to what is hidden in that box today inside that big Bible. There's something in that box that is how Galatians points to Jesus. So this is their alert that they might try to figure out what's in that box from the next three slides. There's several people in this book, such as Peter, Barnabas, Titus, that we did not meet on this trip because our main focus is to learn about the theme Christian liberty. The Jewish Christians, and we as well, were set free from many rules and regulations of the law of Moses when Jesus came and gave a new covenant, the law of Christ. Remember, the old law ended when Jesus died on the cross. His sacrifice on the cross is like the Christian's declaration of independence because it gives us liberty from the old covenant and all of its 600 plus laws. So that's how the book of Galatians is like the Christian's declaration of independence. It shows us that the new law of Christ has set us free from the old law. So we just discovered the answers to both of our questions. First of all, what did the Christians need to be liber liberated from? Um, Audrey? The old law. And why is this message from Paul like the Christian's Declaration of Independence? Gabriel, I think I see your hand up. Yes, because Jesus died. His sacrifice gave us liberty from the old covenant and its 600 plus laws. Jesus Christ was the key who opened up a new covenant the law of Christ. And in Galatians 5, 6, Paul tells us that in our Christian life, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. In other words, we must believe and trust in God enough to obey his will. We must express our faith through loving obedience to him and kindness to all others. So what is Paul's theme in Galatians? Christian liberty. You see those birds are being set free from their cage and that's the way mankind was set free from the law of Moses when the law of Christ came into effect as he died on the cross. Okay, let's get ready to come back to time and here and now. Welcome back to Mountain Home, Arkansas, and isn't this a good place to be? So, who wrote the letter? Paul. It was about AD 49 or 53 to 56, somewhere in there. Some scholars believe it was one, some the other. Where does this letter fit into our timeline events? Correct, it was an epistle. And who did we beat on this trip? We met Paul and some false teachers and the Galatian Christians. And one more time, everybody say it together. What is the theme of Galatians? Christian liberty. Now let's talk about fruit a little bit more. We talked about the fruit of the Spirit. Let's, let's apply this to our lives. Did you know that our lives can be compared to an assortment of fruit? Look at, look at this beautiful fruit. Some people's lives offer fresh fruit like love, joy, peace. Can you name the other fruit listed in Galatians 5? Say them with me. Long suffering, kindness, kindness goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I'm sure you know people that are bearing this kind of fruit. And these are the people we love to be around because they have these good qualities. Then there's other people's lives are rotten fruit because disobedience and jealousy and impure behavior and other sinful attitudes make them and those around them sick. And they don't make them physically sick, but just unpleasant to be around and spiritually sick because they set such a poor example. You probably know some people like this as well. Well, we should choose to be around these people just long enough to set a good example and to share the gospel with them and try to help them improve. But when good fruit stays around rotten fruit, what happens to the good fruit? Yes, it gets rotten as well. So in other words, you don't want to make this kind of people your best friends or even your associates. Then I'm sure you've seen artificial fruit that's made out of rubber or plastic. 
Just to look at it, you might think it's real, but if you're around it very long, you realize it's not real at all, especially if you try to take a bite. The fake fruit represents people who don't want to grow spiritually. Their lives might look good at first, but after a while, when you're around these people, you realize that this person is faking Christianity. They want to look like a Christian, but they don't want to think and speak and act like one. So which of these kind of fruits do you think Jesus wants us to be like, Riley? Fresh, yes, fresh. Do you know people who produce rotten fruit in their lives? Think about whether you want to be that kind of person or not. Do you know someone who pretends to be righteous and Christ-like, but they're really just faking it? I think we all know people like that. Maybe they even come to Bible classes and worship on Sunday, but then when you see them at school on Monday, they're far from living like God wants them to live. So let's work on producing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, the fruit that Paul lists in Galatians 5. Read these with me one more time. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is what is acceptable to God, and our lives should be all about pleasing Him. Okay, now let's go to our map window and see where it was that we visited today. We visited the province of Galatia, which is here in Asia Minor. Galatia, this is all Asia Minor in here. Here's Galatia, that's um, the area and the individual congregations that were started there that are the churches of Galatia are Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. So these are the Galatian churches that Paul was writing this letter to. And you remember when we visited these places on a couple of his journeys. Okay. Let's come back up here now and do our souvenirs. And if you're not familiar with our curriculum, we usually have a souvenir shop set up here with a lot of souvenirs uh, that you might find when you go on a, to a tourist area. And the kids learned the first week or two that these souvenirs were not what we're going to take home with us. We might get a souvenir when we go on a trip, but how long do we really play with it or use it? So what we want are souvenirs that we can take home from this lesson, from this trip we made to Galatia. And we want things that we can put into our heart. My souvenirs. Put them in here each week into this heart box. It's from Psalm 119.11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we put our souvenirs in there each week into our heart and keep them forever. So I'm going to draw three names today to see who gets to read our souvenirs. Riley. Gabriel. And Audrey. So we'll let Riley go first. Let's see what it says. Remember, we'll do it like we did in class. I'll read. Uh, Riley will read it with me, and then all of y'all will read it again. The law of Moses was only for the Jews. The law of Moses was only for the Jews. That's very important to remember, because when did the law of Moses end? When Jesus died on the cross. So that's a souvenir we can take and put in our hearts. Number two will be Gabriel. Read it with me, Gabriel. We will be saved by faith that obeys God's commands. We will be saved by faith that obeys God's commands. Remember, faith isn't enough. Obedience is required. And then the third one is Audrey. Christians are to produce the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. Christians are to produce the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. We've got to be Christians who produce fruit or we'll be like a dead plant. And nobody wants a dead plant. God wants us to produce fruit in our lives. Okay, now we're going to pick a name and see who gets to do our compass points today. This is where we draw this from. Wonder who it'll be. Bentley. 
Bentley gets to do our compass points today. So Bentley, I'm gonna open this up for you. And, just a second. What do you think might be in there? Let's see. Hmm. Okay, Bentley, what is this? Correct, it's a doorknob and it has a, yes, a key. Let's see what the key tag says. It says Jesus. So this key must be representing Jesus. Remember, God planned two laws from the beginning. The old covenant, the law of Moses, it was for the Jews. It was in effect till when? Correct, till Jesus died on the cross. Then when Jesus died, he opened the door to a new covenant. The new covenant, the law of Christ. It became the law for Christians, and that's for us today. Jesus is the key to the new covenant, the new law for God's people. So the book of Galatians shows us that Jesus gave us Christian liberty from the old law of Moses. His law set us free from bondage of the old law of Moses. So, I will add this Bible out in our hallway that tells us that Galatians points to Jesus as our key to a new covenant. Okay. Um, now we're going to do our PowerPoint slide here. If you were here, you would be filling this out. Uh, you would be reminded that the author was Paul, and here are the dates. Scholars, some think it was A.D. 49, some A.D. 53 to 56. The people we met were Paul, the Galatian Christians, and those false teachers who were trying to get the Christians to obey the law of Moses as well as the law of Christ. What was our timeline event? Epistles. Okay, God teaches me in this book to produce fruit of the Spirit in my life. That's what I want you to learn from this book. God wants you to produce fruit of the Spirit in your life. And then, what this book taught me about Jesus, Jesus is the key that opened the door to a new covenant. Remember that. When he died on the cross, he, he opened the door to a new covenant and put the old law of Moses out of existence. And what is our theme? Christian liberty. Well, I hope that you've gotten a lot out of this lesson and I hope that you will be as anxious and excited about coming back to class whenever we can. And And so until next time, God bless you, and I hope you're doing well. Thank you.